my questions? Hello, Cancer Warriors. This is Tanya, and welcome to Power Pantaloons podcast. Today, we have Sarah with us. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you tell everybody a little about what your zone of genius is? How do you help people? I help them to create a healthy lifestyle. I help them to manage their stress. I get them started on the right track if they've gotten off the track. Even if they know what to do, they might need a little help, a little support, a little nudge. And uh, I'm here. I'm here to help them. Fantastic. How do you encourage people to take care of themselves? Okay. Well, I can talk from experience because I grew up in a home when we were very health minded and we ate mostly from the garden patch. My mom did a lot of home cooking. We didn't go to doctors. We used all kinds of natural healing. And my mom always used to say, you have to take care of yourself. You have to eat right, you have to rest. And I just always remember that. So for me, it's something that's very natural because I can hear her saying that now she's not here anymore, but I take care of herself. I still hear her words. And I'm so grateful that I had a mom like that because she showed me the way, but I meet a lot of people they don't know what self-care is. They have never had anybody to, to, share, to encourage them. So I tell them about my experience. I tell them how it's so important to have a work-life balance. I work with a lot of people that are busy. They have home lives with kids and they are just stressed out. So I show them and give them examples of what I do to have that work-life balance and make even a little bit of time for themselves and to do the self-care. So I would like to ask you, so we hear a lot about work-life balance but I and I kind of feel that that's different for everybody, right? Like, and we all have different levels of acceptable in each area. Like, do you, what do you, what do you think about that? I think that people have to work with their schedules and sometimes you can't do everything that you want if you have children, but you have to carve out a time, you know, take care of yourself when the kids are taken care of. Just let's say the mom, I know they're the ones who really are the ones that I, I target most because they, they might share uh, different things in the home, but the responsibility is on the mom, unfortunately, many times. So I always say, you know, don't, Put yourself on the bottom of the rung, put yourself up there and make even 20 minutes, half an hour to relax in the evening, do de-stressing, do a little exercise and get enough sleep. Sleep is so important to our immune system for regulating your stress. It's huge. And many of us are sleep deprived. So I always tell people who are very busy, make sure at least you get seven eight hours if you can, seven to nine is really ideal. And then make a little bit of extra time to de-stress, to do some deep breathing, do some exercise that will make a, a world of difference. Well, I, I, I agree with you, especially on the sleep. Uh, and brain function is impacted when you don't have enough sleep and oh, that impacts oh. everything. I it just, I feel dumber when I don't have enough sleep and I, I and it, Dumb yeah. is the wrong word. I'm, I'm not optimal, right? I, I'm not firing with all my cylinders. I'm foggy. I exactly. have to do things three or four times and I'm still doing them wrong. And a lot of that is because of sleep. So I absolutely agree with that. Um, there's something else I was going to say, but I don't remember what is. And that happens, you know, my my train of thought just derails and, and wanders off once in a while because of, you know, chemo brain. Uh, what is the most important thing in achieving wellness? I'd say self-care. That's really where you got to start. It's almost like if you want to get other things accomplished, if you want to have less stress in your life, if you want to have more time for yourself, you got to start taking care of yourself. 
And I think evaluating how much time are you spending on yourself? And even if it's just once a week or twice a week that you take a class or you take time to be by yourself, do some meditation or yoga or do something that you like that uh, really feeds your soul and that you feel more relaxed. So I think that's where it has to start. And, uh, you know, eating right, of course, and making time to drink enough water. But that self-care, that's part of self-care, I guess, is eating right and drinking enough water and, and doing the other things like managing your stress. Yes. <clears throat> All of those things are important. I remember what I was going to comment on. on um, you are not able to help anybody if you don't have anything in your own personal cup oh. and you know I the proper way to be doing that is to give with what pours out of your cup so your cup has to be full in order for you to have an outpouring and you shouldn't be giving what's inside your cup because that is for you you need that to function optimally everything that comes out of your cup is where you can be generous and yeah I agree. for a lot of people women in particular we have a tendency of just handing people the cup to drink out of and getting an empty cup back and that is so detrimental to our well-being mental health our emotional well-being and you, you get burnout that way. So you, you do have to do what Sarah's saying and you have, you have to take some time for yourself and, and whether that's, you know, 20 minutes in a corner reading your favorite book, or it is a special spa time in the shower, right? Instead of taking a shower, you do it like a you ritualize your bath time, right? And you, you bring in some candles and you have a glass of wine if you do that or water if you don't or whatever, whatever, right? Like, and Absolutely. set up things that are sacred to yourself that you can do and they don't have to be long, right? Like it doesn't have to be this like crazy all day experience. It can be something as simple as 20 minutes, but it should not be, doom scrolling on Facebook or TikTok, right? It should actually be something that nurtures and sustains you instead of numbs your mind. Absolutely. I totally agree. I use that analogy a lot about giving, you know, you can't give if your cup is empty. So you have to fill your own cup first. And uh, otherwise you have nothing to give. And um, another thing I think about is being in touch with nature. So if you have a nice day or even after the snow or even while it's snowing, you go out and just get some fresh air. And, you know, nature always improves our, our mood and lifts us and, and just nourishes our soul. And I think that's even 20 minutes. I sometimes when I'm down, I'll think, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna go for a walk, clear my head. And I just feel so much better afterwards, so. That's that's always helpful. So, right, exactly. Uh, walking in nature. And if you can do it, do it barefoot because then you can ground and you only need to have your feet on the ground for seven minutes for you to uh, regulate your electrical charge. I, I think grounding means that the, 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 I don't know, positive, negative, whatever, right? Like it doesn't matter. Like your body is recalibrating and releasing all of the excess energy into the ground. And that does wonders for you. And you should be doing that once a day if you can. And I know that's really challenging, especially in the North when it's snowing, seven yeah. minutes on the ground is, is not, not going to happen. But as, much, as often as you're able to do that, and it, it really is as little as seven minutes. So your self-care can be pockets of time just built into your day that don't have to take a tremendous amount of time because the idea here is to relax and and take time for yourself not add stress to your day and if you're trying to 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 
fit stuff in that can be stressful. So don't do that to yourself. Just, you know, allow yourself the time to do it when it's natural to do, but make sure you make it a priority for yourself. Another thing I suggest is if you have a calendar, some people have a hard, you know, a regular calendar, or even on your phone, put yourself a little reminder or set an alarm. Say, okay, this is my me time, or this is my time to go for that 20 minute walk. We get caught up, especially if we have a lot going on. If you have children, it's easy to forget. So reminders, are very important, you know, to put it in on a regular basis. And uh, then you don't forget. Make it a non-negotiable on your calendar. Absolutely. Make I like it that. a non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. That's it. When, when you're setting up your calendar, put your non-negotiables in first. That's right. And then everything else can go in. Your, your non-negotiables and then your regular appointments and all of that stuff work and, and, and commute and all that other nonsense. But then you put in your whatnots and and what is negotiable but time for yourself should be absolutely non-negotiable that that is how i believe that works yeah that's definitely good yeah so i i'd like to ask a, um about some of the workshops you've done in the past can you talk about that for a bit well self-care is one of the big ones that i do and i talk about my experience and i help people to to kind of, sometimes people need permission to say, you know, I'm worth it and I deserve it. And I encourage them to do that big time because some people don't think they're that, they're, they're worth it. And so they don't make the time. So sometimes people have to work on that. So um, a, a big part of it is encouraging them to take that time, make it important, put it in their calendar and make it a priority and put it in first before anything else. Another thing that I've done is um, making intentions, especially like the end of the year, beginning of January, making intentions that lead to action instead of making resolutions that don't stick. Because we all make resolutions and how many people really follow through? But a, but a resolution is a, um, it's just a quick fix dream and it's not a reality where an intention is something you, it's something you really see that you need to do, or you want to do, it's more realistic and you're more likely to accomplish that. And that's where you have to start to write things down in your calendar. Sometimes you need a coach or a friend or somebody to help you to be accountable or to encourage you along the way when you're having those tough days. But that's something else that I do also. And I've done other workshops like heart health or, you know, eating healthier, like slender, um, uh, slender, healthy slenderness. That's it. And it's about building a foundation of health more so than working about worrying about calories um, and low calorie things, but just eating and nourishing your body and you can be healthy and slender. So those are some of the topics that I work on. That I, that. intentions i love intentions and you, you know you can put intentions to everything you start your day you, you do an intention for what what the day is going to bring you start any activity you can set an intention for it you start any learning or training you can set an intention for it they're so versatile you for everything that you do you can set an intention and that way you're not just kind of lollygagging through the day or through life but you're you're building a plan towards your your targets and your goals intentions are are phenomenal and i agree with your resolutions get lost very quickly and that's unfortunate because people don't know how to properly set goals and targets to meet those goals and it starts with intentions and there's a book i talk about in that workshop it's very important not to just say what you want to do, but write it down. Because if you say it, the universe hears it, but it's not, it's not intangible. But when you write it down, you could see it, you can hear yourself, you can feel yourself writing, and it becomes, you know, stored in your brain. And there's a really good book called Write It Down and Make It Happen. So I share that too, because it's so 
key to write it down and make it an intention. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I love creating intentions. Um, I don't do it all the time, but I should be doing it more. So I, I yes, I agree that intentions are fantastic and they, they do, they do drive your goals further, but they do have to be followed up with action, right? Like, oh, it, absolutely. But totally. You have to start somewhere, but definitely writing it down leads you to make that action. And by writing it down and it becomes in your calendar, in your phone, um, it, it will encourage you and draw you into it and say, you know, I need to do this, you know, how many times a week, twice a week? Okay, I can do this. You have to be realistic and say, okay, I'm going to go for that walk twice a week for 20 minutes. And then, then it leads to action because your desire is there and you have that. And maybe if you have a friend, they'll say, oh, come on, let's do it together because you always can do things. You're more likely to do things when you're not in the mood and someone says, oh, come on, let's do this. So you have that encouragement. Right. Accountability partners are our gold. Yes. When you, when you, when you, and you, and you should have many of them, right? Like yeah. for different things, because as humans, we really don't, we don't, we don't go do things without, without prodding. But if there is, if, if there is a, a deadline, we're more likely to do it. And if we, if we tell people, if, so like, if we're setting our own deadlines, we can push that back. But if we tell other people about our deadlines, then they can hold us, we can ask them to hold us accountable. Exactly. And then, then we're going to go and do the thing instead of, instead of waiting. So Sarah, and what motivated you to help people to be healthy or become healthy? I've always been interested in health. I mentioned, I grew up in a home that we were very health minded. And um, I just felt like this is natural for me. I, I, I like the fact that I, I know how to find healthy, natural solutions to most things. I said, you know, people today really need help because they don't always know. They don't know that there is another way. They grew up just going to doctors, taking medicine at the first sign of anything. And there's so many other options and I wanna be able to teach them those options and that there's a way to do it naturally without drugs, without uh, stimulants. And um, I wanna teach that. I love, as I was a teacher for 25 years. So I love to teach, I love to share information. I love to empower people and give them the information they need. And so that, that was my main driving point there that I, I want to help people, you know, in their absolutely. lives, make a difference in their life. I, I absolutely. Like mm. there, there is a lot that you can do before you go see doctors. However, doctors do have their place and oh, yeah. medicine oh. does have its place. Uh, totally. I agree with that. Yes. But, you know, we talk a lot about holistic um, wellness here on, on this channel specifically because, uh, I believe my like my personal core beliefs are mind, body, and spirit together as part of your healing journey. Yeah, you know, once you have the diagnosis, the 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 beginning of the journey happens, right? Like nutrition needs to be corrected. Uh, unfortunately, in America, there's a, there's a lot of atrocious atrocious things going on with our food. Um, and eating fresh and organic, if you can, is is definitely the way to go. Uh, food is medicine. You should start with that, you know. Absolutely. That's what I talk about as well. Food is medicine. It's yeah. foundation. It's a foundation of, of your entire, like, yeah. Um, and I believe, you know, there there is a place for doctors and, you know, modern technology, modern medicine, but to me, that's the line, last line of defense. There's just so many things you could do naturally with nutrition, with, with managing your stress. And uh, people don't always know that it's available. So that's what 
I need to, you know, we need to do because we're both very aligned. We need to share that with people so they know that they have options and yep. they can do things. Breath work, meditation. Absolutely. Aromatherapy, flower essences, crystal singing bowls. I, I mean, there are so many different things that can help with stress. And I, I mean, we if, if we wanted to talk about sleep, we could talk about yeah, make your room colder, make your room dark, make your room electronic free uh, or noise free, unless you're one of those individuals that has to have like the rain noise or the white noise or whatever it is, um, you well, know. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted uh, to you, add you know, to what you said. Uh, fragrance, uh, lavender, uh, yeah. jasmine, absolutely. Both both of those are relaxing scents and, and they work well to help get you into a, a, a sleep state. Putting your electronics down an hour before you go just, to bed. I was just going to say that. <laughs> that was then the last hour mind. before you go to sleep, reading or doing something different and put your electronics down. <laughs> yeah, the that other is, schedule. I mean, I mean, there's so many things that you can do just on sleep alone. Um, oh, yeah. I've done yeah, Lots of people lot. have a hard time with sleep. They really do. And it's it's horrible. Don't drink caffeine after two o'clock in the afternoon. I, there's there are at least a hundred things you can do to help you sleep. <laughs> at <laughs> least, absolutely. And another thing, you know, you said so much. I think you almost covered it all. But the other thing is that I teach people is to have a, a routine where you follow every night because that really makes it much easier for you to get to bed at a certain time. And then you're more likely to, you know, have everything done that you want to have. Also prepare things for the next morning so that you, you know, you're less stressed and putting away the electronics is huge. You know, not watching TV or the news is another big thing that really, can, you know, that can keep you from, from sleeping uh, well at night. So. I'm going to yeah. sound like a crazy person now. I don't have a TV in my living room. It's a sitting room. We, we use our phones in there, but, and far too much if you ask me, but I, I prefer conversations and reading and, and other things. But I agree Absolutely. with you on the uh, routines, right? So if you set a morning routine to prepare yourself for the day, get yourself your battle plan and having an evening routine, you know, a dinner time routine and, and a, and a, pre-bed routine, all, all of those things make it easier for you. But the, the bedtime routine will make, your, your body has rhythms. And right. if you're, you're doing wonky things with it, it makes it much harder for your body to adjust, which is, you know, like when, when you travel, jet lag is a thing. So because your body is used to what you normally do. So having a set thing so you, your body can rely on your consistency does help with your sleep. That's where I was trying to go with all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pretty much, you know, that routine could make a big, big difference. Um, yeah, I, that's what I do. And it helps me to, to get the amount of sleep that I need. Uh, when I don't, I see a big difference. So that's what I share with my clients that, you know, it's important, even if you have to write it in your calendar, you know, I, I know somebody who sets an alarm so that they get ready for bed, you know, by 10 o'clock, because otherwise they're up till 12, one o'clock doing all kinds of things. And then, you know, then they're sorry they didn't start earlier. So whatever it takes, you know, write yourself a reminder or an alarm or something. I I actually have several alarms for the day. Um, and, you know, they're for different things. One of them definitely is the it's time to go to bed alarm. But I also have alarms that I set to help me put nutrients in my body, right? Because I don't always remember that I should take time to go eat and if, if I wait too long, then I get hangry and that, you know, that's not good for my body. It's not good for the people around me. So I, I 
do little alarms to keep me on track. I, and it could be as simple as just go grabbing a piece of fruit or a, a yogurt cup or, or something, right? Like, oh yeah, it, it's time to put a little bit of sustenance into my body. Alarms are tremendous. I mean, we carry our smartphones with we, with us everywhere and right. we should be using them for us instead of, you know, being consumed by the social medias, right? Like, absolutely you know, don't don't let the the don't let the phone control you control the phone and use it as the tool that it is meant to be set alarms for yourself and 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 put your walks in there put your you know breakfast and and, and all of that in there yeah. yeah i encourage people i do a lot on hydration and how important it is to drink at least six to eight glasses a day a lot of people don't do that. So I do a workshop on that as well. And one of the things I remind people is to set a reminder or a, a little alarm. So they'll remember to take a, a glass of water maybe every hour, every couple hours. Otherwise people forget that as well. So once it becomes something that you do all the time, it takes at least 21 days to try to make a shift in your health and in how you do things. So once you're doing it all the time for at least two or three weeks, it'll become second nature and then it becomes a habit as you do it after, you know, like 30 or 40 days. But uh, at least to start doing it, you might need to write, you know, set yourself an alarm or a reminder and it really works. It, it, it does. Uh, what Like it's what, 70% of Americans are, are chronically dehydrated. I think it's that high. Yeah, Don't quote me on the number, but I do think it is that outrageous or close to that outrageous. Or sometimes people think that they're hungry, but they're really, they're thirsty. really thirsty. And and if you feel thirsty, that means you're already dehydrated. So you need to drink before you feel that thirst. And um, a lot of times just take a glass of water and you feel satisfied. You don't feel hungry anymore because your body really needed to be hydrated. So water is so important for so many things. I talk about that. I do a whole workshop on that for at least half an hour or more. And so uh, that's one of the key things to health is hydration. And it's easy and everybody can do it. So it's something everybody can can really help themselves with. Fantastic, Sarah. So how can people reach you? I have a an email. Um, it's Sarah Reinholds18 at uh, gmail.com. Then I also have a website. It's uh, www.sunnysarah.net. It's one about that I've created about wellness. I have blogs on there. And I also, uh, I incorporate whole food nutrition. It's information on that. And they can contact me that way. Um, I can give you a phone number. Should I do that as well? No, no. We'll put your we'll put your website into the show notes, okay. and that way people can find you that way. All right. I want I want to thank you for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I, you're welcome. It was my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Until next time, wellness warriors, cancer warriors, whatever whatever we are today, set your intentions, and your intentions should include making your appointments for your annual physical and and all of the appropriate testing that you need to get done to make sure that you are healthy. Good night.